Why won't you tell me what's out there? That's the maze. The 2014 sci-fi movie The Maze Runner is about a group of people who try to escape a circular maze. In this video, we'll learn how to create a circular maze pattern and how to create paths through the maze with increasing difficulty using the depth first search method. In order to visualize our circular maze, we take a few concentric circles and we divide all the circles into smaller sections except the innermost circle. If we unravel this pattern into a tree, we can see that the cell at level 0 is parent to all the cells at level 1. And a cell at level 1 has two children on level 2. If we were to trace a path from the center of our pattern to the cell at its boundary, that would depict this path in our tree. Notice that a cell is also connected to the cells in its surrounding, so we need to create connections towards its left and right. When we add those connections, it's no longer a tree since there are cycles in this graph. What about the boundary cells? Well, they are connected to each other since this is our circular pattern. And this is the graph that represents the nodes or cells in our circular pattern. In order to draw our circular pattern, we will use turtle. Here in our circular maze class, we accept the number of levels and the radius for our innermost level. And then we compute the number of cells at each level. If you look at this diagram, you will notice that as we move towards the higher levels, the area of our sections increases. So we have to divide them into smaller sections. This will also help us increase the difficulty level of our maze. The sequence that we want looks like this. Zero is a special case. We always want to map level zero to one cell. But for level one and two, we want 16. And for level three to six, we want 32 cells. In order to do that, let's add one to our level. And now you will notice that from two to just before the next power of two, we want to map these numbers to 16. From four to just before the next power of two, we want to map those numbers to 32. Take the log two of these numbers and we remove the decimal part. So we get 1 and 1 for from 2 and 3. For 4 to 7, we get just 2. Now it is much easier to map 1 to 16 and 2 to 32. All we have to do is raise 2 to the power of this number plus 3. And this function does exactly that. In our draw circular pattern method, for each level, we compute the radius for the current level and then we divide 360 by the number of cells at current level which gives us arc angle which is the angle projected by each section in current level on the center of the circle then we go to this position along x-axis and then for all the cells for current level we draw a vertical line and then we draw the bottom arc a cell or a section in any level is comprised of a combination of two lines and two arcs but we are only drawing one line and one arc the logic is that once we put them all together they will form a closed pattern but we'll still need to draw the outer boundary to close our circular pattern which we do here let's run this method Here you can see that we are only drawing the vertical line and the bottom arc for each section. The sections will be closed from the top by the next level's bottom arc. But for the outermost level, we'll need to draw a boundary to close our pattern. In order to create a spanning tree from our graph, we'll use depth first search because it helps us create mazes of maximum depth compared to Prim's algorithm that we saw in the previous video. For depth first search, we pick a branch and go to its maximum depth. And we use stack, which is a last in first out data structure to record all the elements that we encounter on the way so that once we hit the bottom node of a branch, we could return to its parent using the stack. We start at root node three, add it to our stack and path, pick its leftmost branch, Add 5 to our stack and path, pick its branch, and add 2 to our stack and path. 2 does not have any children, so we remove 2 from the stack, return to its parent. Now we check 5. 
5 does not have any remaining branches so we remove it from the stack return to its parent which is 3 and go down its next branch that leads us to 7 add it to our stack and path go down its leftmost branch add 9 to the stack and path 9 does not have any branches so remove it from the stack return to the parent 7 has one remaining branch go down that path add 0 to the stack and path 0 doesn't have any branches coming out of it so remove it from the stack return to 7 7 is completely visited now so we return to 3 3 has yet another remaining branch and we go down that path visit 1 add it to the stack and path and we see that 1 does not have any remaining children so we remove it from the stack and go back to 3 now 3 has all of its branches completely visited so we remove it from our stack this is our path that we took while traversing here is the code for depth first search we define our graph as an adjacency list which keeps tracks of connections between adjacent cells we pick a cell randomly to start with add it to the list of visited cells and also add it to our stack then we convert this cell's 1d representation to its 2d representation and separate it into level and the cell number in current level now we want to get all the neighbors indices for the current cell if we are at level 0 then all the cells at level 1 will be the neighbors of the current cell otherwise the current cell will have a parent neighbor a left neighbor and a right neighbor and if we are not at the last level then the current cell will also have one or two children if the number of cells on the current level is less than the number of cells at the next level then this cell will have exactly two children that we add here otherwise it will have exactly one children here we are only keeping those neighbors of the current cell that have not been visited if the count is greater than zero then we pick one neighbor randomly add it to the list of visited cells and also to our stack we add next cell to the list of connections of the current cell we do the same vice versa here we add the current cell in the list of connections for the next cell and set the next cell as the current cell for the next iteration but if we do not have any unvisited neighbors then we pop a cell from the stack and visit that cell repeat this process until all the cells have been visited and we'll have a spanning tree using depth first search. our draw maze method is very similar to draw circular pattern here we convert the 2d index for the current cell to its 1d representation then we take the index for the parent cell and left neighbor if the left neighbor and the current cell are not connected we want to draw a line between the left neighbor and the current cell otherwise this line would be skipped if there is no connection between the parent cell and the current cell we want to draw an arc between them this way we'll complete all of our sections and we'll need to only draw the boundary of our maze which we do here we only skip one arc randomly in the boundary of our maze so that it would serve as an entrance to our maze let's run this method it looks good let's draw a bigger maze 